Good morning, everyone. I'm Father Wayne Valskit, and I greet you from the Ngome Marian Shrine. And this, this day 16 of the Lenten Reflections of 40 Days, Thursday of the second week of Lent. The readings for today's Holy Mass, the first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 5 to 10. And I highlight the following. Cursed is the man who trusts in man. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately corrupt. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the mind and try the heart to give to each and every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16, verse 19 to 31. I highlight the story of Lazarus. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man. And at his gate, a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. Abraham said, Between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Our Lenten journey has been filled with interesting encounters. The Lord has been pushing us to an awareness of self before God, of the person before God, of the, inv the individual before God. He called us to repent, appealing to the Lenten pillars of prayer, fasting and almsgiving. He led us into our own desert to be tested and tried in fact, he's continuing that purification, to purify our Lenten intentions. He began to speak about deep prayer, revealing his prayer to the Father as our prayer to our Father. He reminded us about the power of God's words and how they fulfill his purpose, his divine will. He pressed us to think of our Lenten journey as not just for ourselves, but for the salvation of all souls, making us realize that we are intercessors for one another. The Lord also challenged our traditions and our customs, especially when these became the obstacles to, to our faithfulness to His divine will. He brought us back to His laws, His precepts, His ordinances, and showed that these give life to the one who lives them. In fact, He called us to perfectly follow them as the sign of holiness. He emphasized that faith grows and matures through obedience to the voice of God, manifested in these laws, precepts, and ordinances. He helped us to understand that towards others on their journey, we are to act with mercy as a sure way of leading them back to God. He asked us to guard against serious sin, deep-rooted hurt, and, to, and the deceptive actions of false prophets, ungodly ministers, who can suddenly radically turn one against God. And yesterday the Lord asked us through His Word, if we could drink from the chalice of suffering, sacrifice, humiliation, if we could become servants in the way we lead others to God, in a word, to be last and least of all, so that others can be first. Today the Word says, it is a curse to, a curse to trust in man and a blessing to trust in the Lord. The Lord knows whether we trust in Him, since this trust manifests in our hearts. The only place freely accessible to Him is the heart. For what is in our hearts and what emerges from those hearts, for that He will reward us. In the Gospel story of Lazarus and the rich man today, He describes the reality of hell 
and the immense suffering that comes to one whose heart is cold, merciless, self-centered, cruel, in a word, uncharitable. The strange truth for us today is that as much as we don't see ourselves as the cruel rich person who was wicked in his selfishness, we often don't realize that every privilege of faith, of health, of well-rounded family upbringing, every blessing from God can easily be used to hurt and oppress others, to become indifferent to others, instead of these becoming blessings for others. Just stop today, stop for a moment and reflect. Is your Lenten journey, is it a blessing to others? Especially those who are spiritually less privileged than you? Or is this Lent all about you? My dear friends, your Lenten gains, your Lenten strides towards holiness, your Lenten successes towards repentance, conversion, is intricately linked to the holiness, repentance, and conversion of others. That's God's way. That's God's law of salvation. As the psalm says, Blessed indeed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders His law day and night. Let us pray. Bestow upon your servants, Lord, abundance of grace and protection. Grant health of mind and body. Grant fullness of fraternal charity. And make them always devoted to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.